Hi everybody, it's Kelly Russell, the Rock Your Joy Coach. Thank you so much for being with me today. Welcome to my channel. So my topic for this week is there's no place like home, specifically at home in God. And the section of the course that I am talking about today is in chapter 10 and it is section one, which is entitled At Home in God. And so the whole idea of A Course in Miracles in the, I, that we are dreaming an illusion, we are dreaming a dream, but we are actually at home in God, the home we never left is such a freaky concept, right? You know, it feels, it doesn't feel like we're home with God. It feels like we're here in this world and that this world is super real and all kinds of shit is happening here. And we have, you know, we have relationships and we have our work and we have things that go on and we have things that we love and, you know, and experiences that are fun. And then we have disasters and tragedies and all of those things, especially when they are so emotionally, you know, connected for us and that we feel such strong feelings about, it feels really real. It doesn't feel like a dream. And so I think a lot of people have find this idea really challenging and yet if we don't get that this is a dream this is a central teaching of a course the central teaching of a course is there is no world that we are dreaming this illusion that's been made up by the ego and that we are actually really at home in god where we never left so we think we're here but we're actually at home in God. And, and so, you know, some of the things that can be really helpful, some of the tools I think that can be really helpful around this concept, one of them uh, is the Matrix movies, because in the Matrix, they're literally, you know, lying in this chair and they're in a sleep state, like a trance state. And then everything that seems to go on when they go into the matrix, you know, when they take the blue pill or the red pill or whatever it is, is happening in this trance-like dream state. But it, they're doing battles and they're, you know, having all kinds of crazy things happen. And, you know, you can be killed in the dream. And, I mean, it's, you know, it's intense but it's still a dream. And so, you know, I, I love that, I love that sometimes movies can help us understand some of these more complex ideas presented in the course. And so my favorite, favorite, favorite one about this is the Wizard of Oz. Because in the Wizard of Oz, right? Like Dorothy is, you know, she's at home and, you know, she's singing, over the rainbow and you know she's like she's you know pretty having a, a pretty decent time she's got her friends at home that are you know the the guys that are working on the farm or whatever she's got her Annie M there and all of that and then a big old storm happens a big old ego storm appears to happen and she's getting blown all over the place. And she knows it's like, it's like the tiny mad idea, right? And all of a sudden everything's swirling around and it's dark and black and, and the house gets picked up and it gets, you know, it disappears in a big funnel cloud and then boom, it's set down and she comes out the door and the very first thing that happens when she comes out the door, or one of the very first things that happens is that she realizes that the house has landed on a witch and killed her. And so now she's immediately guilty and feels terrible and feels bad. And there's this idea planted that somebody's gonna be out to get her Right. And she's looking all around and, 
you know, the, the world is really, really different than she remembers it being. And, but she, she knows that she wants to go home. It's, it's, it's different here. It feels foreign. Everything looks really different. You know, there's the munchkins and there's, you know, there's the, the yellow brick road that seems to go off into the distance. It seems like that's, that's the way to go. That's the way to go home. That's what everybody's telling her, you know, and then Glinda appears in this, you know, beautiful, shimmery, sparkly pink bubble. And Glinda is like the Holy Spirit that is telling her that she can go home anytime she wants. And she gives her these ruby slippers and she tells her that that's all she has to do is click her heels together and say, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And that she will be able to go home. But in the process of her going, trying to get home, you know, she makes these mighty companions along the way with the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the Lion. And they're all harboring a belief that they are lacking in some way. You know, the, the Scarecrow doesn't have a brain. The Tin Man doesn't have a heart. The Lion doesn't have courage. Dorothy's not at home. And they're all, they all have these, this false belief that something that's actually within them they don't have it right and she's got her also she's got her her trusted mighty companion toto that's just with her through the whole thing thick and thin and and so you know she as she's making this journey and everybody tells her that she has to go and talk to oz you know you got to listen to oz oz is the voice you have to listen to Meanwhile, Glinda is like the voice of spirit. You know, you can go home anytime you want, but nope, now we got to go to Oz and Oz, the great and powerful Oz, which there, I just don't think there was ever a better representation cinematically of the ego than the great and powerful Oz, which was a projection, right? And there's a little man behind the screen that's just running the whole thing, you know, when they finally get to Oz. And, and they realized that it was just, he was just pretending. He was just projecting. He didn't have any power at all. You know, it was, he was really nothing in terms of having the power to make anything happen or not happen. Just like the ego, right? That's our, our belief is that the ego is this, this voice in our heads, this conditioned voice in our heads is telling us all this stuff and it's bullshit. And meanwhile, we have the voice of spirit telling us all the time, you know, that you're you're at home. You never left home. You're safe at home. You're home in God. And we're busy running around, you know, being afraid of the flying monkeys, all the different things that happen to us in the world are these flying monkeys and this this feeling that something is out to get us characterized by the wicked witch and i do not think witches are wicked but in it this is the way that that the ego is is depicted in in these various forms you know in in the form of oz and the witch and the flying monkeys and and all this danger happening around everywhere and that you know that the ego wants to kill us and what does the Wicked Witch want from Dorothy? She wants the shoes. The shoes are Dorothy's vehicle to get home. And that's what the, that ego part of our minds is constantly trying to take from us. Our instrument for going home. Our instrument for remembering who we are and being back in our awareness at home with our brothers and with God where we never left. And our instrument is our remembering, our belief, and the way that we get to it in this world. The way that we get to it in this world is to see our brothers as innocent, as not guilty, so that we can see ourselves as innocent and not guilty, so that we can remember 
that this dream is just a crazy projection that we had because we thought that we were that we had done something wrong we thought we were guilty and we were trying to get away from god because we thought god was going to be out to get us and was going to punish us none of which is true so this part i want to read to you at home in god it's in paragraph two and three you are at home in god dreaming of exile but perfectly capable of awakening to reality. Is it your decision to do so? You recognize from your own experience that what you see in dreams you think is real while you are asleep. Yet the instant you waken, you realize that everything that seemed to happen in the dream did not happen at all. Right? Like when, when Dorothy wakes up she's like oh what like oh my god that was that was so real but and you were there and you were there and you were there and it, it really happened but you know I guess you know maybe it didn't maybe it didn't really happen like you know and when we have our dreams at night when we wake up we have a nightmare or a terrible dream and then we wake up where we say, we're like, oh my God, thank God that was only a dream, right? We should be saying that to ourselves every single fucking day. Thank God this is only a dream, especially when it seems like it's really real, right? He goes on to say about, about when we wake up from a dream and we realize none of it happened, you do not think this strange, even though all the laws of what you awakened to were violated while you slept. Is it not possible that you merely shifted from one dream to another without really waking? Meaning waking up from the dream in our bed at night that, you know, that we're having while we're sleeping and then waking up into this dream, which is also equally as unreal. You know, of course, the miracle says that our, that all of our time is spent in dreaming and that our sleeping and our waking dreams have different forms and that is all. It's the only difference. Would you bother to reconcile what happened in conflicting dreams or would you dismiss both together if you discovered that reality is in accord with neither? You do not remember being awake. That's the only problem is we don't remember being awake. But just because we don't remember something doesn't mean it didn't happen. You know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I've forgotten along the way. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Doesn't mean it isn't true. I mean, in the world of form, it isn't true. That's my whole point today, right? But in my experience, it happened, even if I don't remember it. And so our home in God is the truth of us. It is where we still are. We never left. It was only a tiny little mad idea, a tiny little dream that we had that because we didn't immediately dismiss it as a crazy dream, our reality went on, but we fell asleep into this crazy dream and and got caught in it and got basically sort of stuck in it and didn't know how to wake up. And the Glinda of our experience is the Holy Spirit who is gently reminding us that this is only a dream and pointing out to us that we have the capacity to awaken any time that we want and that our version of the Ruby Slippers is in fact forgiveness because when we want to undo the ego when, when that's truly what we want when we want to escape this world and go home being able to see the innocence in our brothers so that we can see it in ourselves the tool that the that the holy spirit that jesus in a course in miracles gives us to be able to recognize our oneness and our innocence and our perfection and and the fact that we are at home where we never left is that forgiving our brothers and ourselves for what we never did which includes forgiving ourselves 
for dreaming this crazy dream and believing that it's real. And that really is what ultimately what the forgiveness is. It's not forgiving other people for what they did. It's forgiving them for what they didn't do, forgiving ourselves for believing and, and sleeping and, and dreaming and making the decision to wake up by giving whatever our grievances are over to Holy Spirit, letting them go and allow ourselves to gently be led home. So that is my message for you today is remembering that there is no place like home, that you are at home in God, that you never left. And that as you allow yourself to make the decision to see your brothers as innocent, you will see that light of innocence in yourself and you will gradually awaken. And when you fully awaken, then you'll just be at home in God as we all are, already are. And this world and everything in it will have been a crazy d dream that you awakened from. So thank you for being with me today. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. I'm here every week talking about the practical application of A Course in Miracles in your life. And if you feel like you could use some real help in awakening from whatever the dream looks like in your own life, or whatever that, whatever your experience seems to be, I can tell you that it's, it's always something that has to do with a relationship whether it's a relationship with yourself or another person or the divine it's all the same thing and so I do coach people to strengthen that relationship and to cultivate it so that you can actually have a miraculous life so if that sounds interesting to you then click the button below and book a discovery coaching call with me it's free and it could change your life. I'll see you next week. I love you.